Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be continuing our hand-painted bridge over the stream scene. In this session I'm going to talk about setting up your modules, unwrapping and filling in the base colours for painting. I'll be doing a modular approach which is not particularly beginner friendly but it is a lot quicker. However if you want to dive right in and start painting then look at my quick start guide and if you use that approach you can then join all the objects together, unwrap them and just start painting. And then you can join us in the next episode where I'll talk about the painting in detail. You might just want to check the end of the video to make sure that you're in the same place as the rest of us. For those that are interested in learning the full workflow and understanding how you can reuse objects, how you can quickly start painting and how you can build up bigger scenes quickly, then keep watching. So there's several approaches to hand painting. The approach I'm taking is one of speed because I'll be painting modules. That means I'll only have to paint them once and then I'll be able to place them in my scene rather than having, let's say, several planks across my bridge and having to paint each one individually. Now there are slight issues with this approach. If you look at my scene here, you can see the points where the modules meet are very sharp. And that's a problem you'll get if you take a purely modular approach. However, what you can do is at the end, you can join them all together and then start painting these areas in between. For example, painting a bit of grass up on this rock so that it all blends into each other. So start with the modules for speed and then join them all together to make really beautiful scenes. However, that's a destructive approach because as soon as I start painting grass on this rock here, if it's modular, all these other rocks will have that bit of grass painted on it. So if you're making games, you'll need to make a decision about which approach is best. Don't panic though, because generally if it's seen from a distance like here, a modular approach can be just fine and you can hide lots of these things with plants and other techniques, which I'll talk about in later episodes. So I'll briefly talk about the different parts. I've got the river, the base. Now my river and base, if I go into them, you can see that I actually do have the base of the river bed. That's just in case anybody wants to make the river transparent, you can see the bed underneath, but I probably won't do that in this tutorial. I'll just paint the river as a solid color. So you can actually delete all these faces that you can't see. The same for the river. That's got bottom faces in here that you could get rid of and delete. That's if you're truly trying to optimize. The different modules, I've got two planks for a bit of variation. I've only got one beam, one rock, three stone floor tile type things, some supporting beams for our bridge, and one bottom beam and one top beam. And I've used all those and put them together into this sort of scene here. But I've got those on a separate layer, so I can turn them off and on. So I can be painting away, but see what they look like in the end result. Now we will be painting on our modules here, but you might want to set up a sort of finished position so you can see what it looks like. And when you paint on your models, it will appear over here as well, as long as these are linked duplicates. At the moment, I've set them up so they aren't, and I'm going to show you how you can link them. So I'm giving the example that someone's created their modules, brought them all across, and just duplicated them, and actually forgotten to link them. Well, you can just link them up by selecting all your modules, select your main one last, so the active one with the yellow outline, and then Control L. And we've done this before. You can link your materials here, but we want to actually link the whole object data. So when I click that, now when I make any changes to this, so let's go to edit mode and pull one vertices around, you can see that it's pulling the others. I've got proportional editing on, which I'll turn off now in fact, hence why lots of vertices were moving. So you just need to make sure that your modules are linked together. Active object being the last one in the yellow outline, control L, object data. So now when I paint on one, it will update on the other ones because they'll share the UV space. Now do be aware that if I want to go in here, edit this and move something around to make that a bit individual, it's linked of course, so it's going to affect everything. If you want to do that at any time, then I suggest you make two modules. However, with something like a beam, remember that you can rotate it several ways to make it look individual. So I'll hide the final pieces and I've moved them into this collection here. I've got two collections, my modules and my final position. And now we need to set these up ready for painting. Now there's a very quick and easy way of doing this. It's a bit rough, but it's a good starting point for beginners. So what we need to do is unwrap our objects. There's a quick and easy way of doing this and it's quite effective when you're hand painting but if you want a truly professional approach, then you need to look up UV unwrapping. We're going to be a bit naughty and do it automatically. We'll select them all into edit mode 
which it isn't doing, so it probably means I've got something else selected somewhere. Just press Alt A to deselect everything, and then try again. And this time it's working. Select everything with A, so I've got all my faces selected. Let's go to face mode because it's about unwrapping faces, and we'll bring up our UV editing workspace. Now if you don't understand unwrapping at all, then I suggest that you look at my tutorial about unwrapping. It is 2.79, but the principles are exactly the same. I may have updated it by the time you see this tutorial. So we press U to unwrap, and Smart UV Project, and the island margin we'll want to put up to at least six, and we'll see what this looks like. So you can see all the faces have been placed onto one 2D object. Now we can paint on here, and they'll appear over here. And what's fairly important is that you go in and you just have a quick look around and make sure there's no errors. If any of these, if I select vertices for the moment and grab that over the top of each other like that, then that will cause you big problems. So just double check that it hasn't done that for you. Our object's fairly simple, so that probably won't happen. The more detailed your object, then the more likely that is to happen. Just a quick check around. And I'll quickly talk about this one here. Can you see how close these islands are together? Now these should be fine, but they are very close together. And if you have any glitches or problems, then you might need to move these islands a bit apart. But generally the Smart UV Unwrap does a fairly good job. So very quickly, if you do need to move the islands, let's go into face mode. Now there's a button here, which is UV Sync Selection. Make sure that's turned off for doing this and select all your shape and then go to faces and move your object and find somewhere with a lot of space around it. It's a difficult one to explain, but it means that when I click on here, I'll be able to see what I've clicked on over here, but that can have problems when you're trying to move them around. So you untick this UV sync selection and you can move these UVs around without any issues. So just a quick check around for any others like that. You know this has gone wrong if you start painting and let's say I'm painting a blue color over here and it appears somewhere over here, that means your UVs have overlapped each other. And you'll have to go back into the UV editor and tidy that up. Now you can increase the island margin, but that does give you less UV space to work with when you're painting. So U to unwrap, smart UV project, and turning the island margin up a bit, press OK, can you see the distance is further, but I've got much more space of UVs that aren't being used. So when I'm painting, I've not got as many pixels to play with. I'm hoping that's something they'll sort out in later episodes of 2.81 or whatever. And I think there's paid for plugins you can get to help you with this task if you want to do hand painting professionally. So now I'm finally ready for painting. So I can go to the texture paint slot this time, which hopefully for you looks something similar to this. Now, because I had all my objects selected, you can only paint on one at a time. So let's quickly go back to layout and see what my active object was. It's the base of my island. So that's the one I'll be painting on right now. But there's no texture, so I can't paint, and it says missing materials textures detected. So I haven't actually assigned a material to my objects. We can do that within the texture space, and I always like to do this anyway, which is come over to the side here, and when your cursor changes to double arrows, right click, split area, and make two areas over here. And I'm going to change this one to the shader editor. Press N to get rid of this toolbar. And as you can see, it's purple at the moment, which means it's got no texture on it. So let's create a new material, and here's our new material. But our material needs a texture to paint on. So we can go across to here, the texture slots, which is on my active tools button here, in the texture paint workspace, and press the plus sign. Then choose base color, because we'll be coloring in. I'm going to make my texture nice and big because it's got all my modules on. So 2048 by 2048. It's just a force of habit that, and I think you can just these days go for 2000, but it's very slightly optimized if you go for 2048. I'm going to change the color to a greeny color, somewhere around there. And I don't need the alpha, which is the transparency. I can turn that off because we've not got any transparent objects in this texture. Press OK. And now it all turns green, which is good. There's our material linked up. It looks very plasticky at the moment. I can go to the look dev mode up the top here, which looks a bit better, but it's still very reflective. I'm going to turn the roughness up to one, and now that's ready for hand painting and getting that hand painted style. The other thing I do is turn the specular down. 
About 0.25 because it takes away some of that sheen. So after all those stages we can finally get on to painting. The first thing I will do is block out. I'll very quickly explain the controls. You've got your brushes down the side here. I'm on the draw brush at the moment. I can change the size of my brush. Up the top here, strength up the top, and blend mode and so on. They're all down the side here as well. You'll get used to these as I talk about them more, as long as you have the active tool workspace. It's probably worth saying that it's automatically put me in texture paint mode. So there's all my object mode and edit mode and we're in texture paint mode, just in case you have a problem there. The shortcuts to change the size of your brush is F and the strength of your brush is Shift F. You can actually use the square brackets as well if you're used to Photoshop. So what I'm quickly going to do is fill in some colors with the fill brush. Now my base has two colors. It's got a green and a brown, but I'm just gonna fill it in green for now. So I'll select a green color in my color picker down here and give it that green color by clicking on it, which is nice and simple. Now, unfortunately, these are all separate objects. So I need to go back to layout mode, select a new object, back to texture pane mode, and then fill that in. But that object hasn't got the same material as this object. So I just need to make sure that I find my material, which is material 04. I'm going to name that so we know exactly what it is. Modules color. And you can see it's turned green because that was our starting point of our texture. So I can use my fill brush now, change this to a nice brownie color down here and just click and fill that in. So it's back to layout mode, select a different object, back to texture paint mode. Make sure that object's got the correct material and it should turn the base color of that texture. Then we can fill that in. Also, you should be able to see that base color down here and see how it's filling in the different areas. So I'll quickly time-lapse me filling these in. And I realized afterwards that I made an error. I could have just gone into layout mode, selected all the objects and linked the material rather than having to link them up each time when I came into texture mode. So have a go at doing that as well. So select all your objects, active object last and control L link materials. That will save you a lot of time that I wasted here. So now all my colors are filled in. You only have to link the texture up once but when you are painting in this modular kind of way, you do need to keep switching between your objects. You could get around that by joining them all together and then separating them after you've painted. But for the sake of not overcomplicating things, just go back into layout mode, select your object, back into texture mode and start painting. You can actually go into object mode here and choose your objects if you prefer and then back to texture paint. But I find it just as easy to layout mode, select your object and back to texture paint. It's the same amount of clicks. So there we're finally set up, ready for painting. It seems like a long process, but once you get used to it, it's not actually that bad. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.